Hi, this is Peggy Van de Plache, and today we are joined by Kelly Elliott. Thank you so much, Kelly, for being here. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you for having me here. So Kelly is a tapping coach. So we're going to explain a bit more uh, what tapping is, and she is my tapping coach. So uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about what tapping is, please? Sure, yeah. So tapping is also known as emotional freedom technique. And what it is, is a, a mind body technique that helps to uh, helps people feel better, both emotionally and physically. Um, it makes changes in the subconscious mm -hmm. and uh, it, it helps to remove negative emotions from memories and, and memories that we may not even realize are impacting us. Yes. And, you know, I've, I've been doing tapping with you. I've been doing tapping on my own. And what I really love using tapping for is for limiting belief, you know, and uh, and there are two, two, two types of limiting belief, the ones you're aware of and the one you're not aware of. And, and we'll, right. go, we'll go in that detail. So um, in the context of someone's career, um, what type of blocks or limiting belief you might have seen with your clients and have, have worked on? Because I really want the viewers to understand what they can do. Uh, sometimes we don't realize we can do something about our limitations. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've, I've worked with so many different uh, career related uh, issues. Uh, one of them that comes to mind that, that's really common with people is public speaking. Uh, right, so they may have a apprehension or even a, a phobia of public speaking. And what people don't realize is, you know, we think, oh, that's just normal. A lot of us have that. What people don't realize is that's actually coming from often a trauma um, in their past, in their childhood that they may not remember. And so it's this memory that was stored in the brain. So, for example, it could be as simple as I was in kindergarten and I uh, put up my hand to uh, answer a question and I thought I knew the answer and then everyone laughed at me. Yeah. And so the brain is really remembering uh, almost like, you know, when you touch a hot stove, the brain yeah. remembers, yeah. don't touch a hot stove. So it's the same thing. Don't put yourself out there. People are going to laugh. Mm -hmm. So the brain is on high alert when all eyes are on you and you're, you're, you're speaking, it's remembering that. And so your conscious memory may not remember that, but your subconscious certainly does. Okay, so that might be people coming to you knowing that public speaking is a problem. And yes. then you, you dig a bit deeper. What, what else have you seen? You know what? It's funny because I've never thought about public speaking because I have no issue with that. So I never thought about that <laughs> being, being a challenge. Uh, I have many other challenges. Public speaking is not one of them. What else do you have an, another example that you see maybe quite quite often in, in people? And when I say career money, sometimes is linked with career as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People limit themselves uh, with money, with finances. So um, they may not be aware that they're sabotaging themselves because they may have a belief of uh, either deserving or of safety. So maybe... I don't deserve to have that kind of money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for example, uh, uh, maybe uh, in, in my family, they were poor. Yeah. And so, right, to have more than my family, I'm, I'm betraying my family in some way. Yeah. Exactly. So there, there's all different ways that we can limit ourselves. Or we just, uh, so, some people might think, um, uh, you know, this limit is, is safe or feels okay. And beyond this, that's too much yeah people will right. try to attack me or people will try and i'm exactly totally projecting myself because it's that's some of my challenges so that's why it comes to me so easy to say what you might think in that context but yeah you have many things based on on your past to your point yeah. and, and and that's something that's very um interesting is that you have a limiting belief like what you mentioned the public speaking where people are very well aware of that. And it's a bit, if I take a parallel with me, I had a very uh, keen understanding that I had a poverty consciousness right. based on my family, my upbringing. So we work on that. But then there are all this limiting belief you don't know you have. And that's why it's so helpful to work with a coach like you because, yeah. and I'm going to take my example, you know that very well, we work a lot on that, which I had absolutely no issue. So 
uh, one of my uh, self-sabotage, and I've been very honest with that, has been with, with money uh, in, in my life. And when we worked on it, we realized that because I went to Catholic school from the time I was two years old to the time I was 24 years old, a lot, a lot of, you know, um, unconscious uh, mm -hmm. limiting belief were there. You would have told me that, I would have said, of course not. I have no issue with that. And when we started working, we realized that, oh my God, I have a massive issue that's coming from my belief that you cannot be a good Catholic girl and make good money, you know? Right. That's something I'm sure you must discover very, very interesting uh, underlying causes for people. Yes, it's, it's amazing that we think as human beings, we know who we are and we know ourselves. And the reality is 90% of what goes on in our brains is subconscious. Mm -hmm. And and most of that is coming from our childhood, from moments that were very impactful and made an impact on our nervous system. So anytime we're feeling feeling fearful, nervous, all of that is coming from an old memory. Yeah. So uh, it's just amazing. We think we know ourselves. We really don't. And that's the one thing that people have to get used to when they start working on themselves and doing this sort of uh, technique is that you don't know yourself and it can be quite alarming to yeah. to discover these things it's um, but it's undeniable because it's not just an awareness in your mind you feel it in your body and that's 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 the, the, the premise of this technique is we're working with the feelings in the body so there's no denying it's not me telling you you have this belief or uh, you know, I, I listen to you and I tell you what it is. No, yeah. it's actually your body tells you um, yeah. by its reaction when we're doing the technique. Oh, gosh, that that feels very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Saying that out loud feels very uncomfortable. I think that's great for also anxiety, because you mentioned you mentioned for public speaking that we tend to think it's normal to be nervous and right. If I take my example, because I, I've been on eye alert since I was a little kid, you know, uh, my survival instinct is quite developed. Uh, mm -hmm. The challenge is that I tend to think it's normal for me to always be very anxious and very uh, borderline paranoid. And after you realize that, no, it's not normal. It's, it's, it's a learned. It's behavior. conditioned. Yeah. 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 And the free, and I mean, that's your, I mean, that's your, that's the name of your company, Free Your Life. And I know that sometimes people say, oh, what does it mean? It's very cliche, you know? And actually, you know, when you start working on that uh, with you, on that technique or on your own, I love tapping because um, it's something people can work on their own, work with a coach, work mm -hmm. on their own. So that gives them also the freedom. It's easy, it's simple, it's cheap. And, you know, yeah. like, it's not something where you need to go for like 15 years of, um, I have nothing against uh, psychotherapy, but I like better, right. fast, <laughs> fast results. Right. And, yeah. uh, and tapping really, uh, really give that. I'm sure you must see your clients, some of them in a few months, in a year, totally transforming their lives. Oh, completely. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I should explain just a little bit about the technique. Yes. Um, what's actually happening that might that might help uh, uh, quiet some curiosity. So this is very different than uh, than talking about problems and psychotherapy. You know, where where you're 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 just using one part of your brain to recount. Well, this is how I feel. This is my problem. We're not doing that. Um, in, in a sense, because it's a mind body technique. What we're doing is we're combining a whole bunch of different uh, activations in the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're able to unlock the brain. So when you, when you go to a, a, a old school, typical therapist, you're just talking. Yeah. And when you come to me, what we're doing is we're intensely feeling the emotions. We're not running from them. Mm -hmm. I'm actually guiding you to feel them, uh, to their most, like to, to the highest, uh, uh effect that we can. And we're also tapping on different parts of the body. So you're following a pattern. And so in a sense, you're talking, you're feeling, you're tapping, you're feeling your fingers on your skin. 
all of this together, what it does is it's lighting up different areas of the brain. So normally when you're recounting something fearful, you're only lighting up the fear center of the brain, the amygdala. But what's happening is you're lighting up all these different areas. And so now the brain gets a different signal. And when the brain is getting this different signal, it now it's got a different story related to that old memory. And so the cortisol level in the body comes down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and so we're able to charge. create a new story. Yeah. It, it's removing the charge. I think yes. from the story because you can tell a story and have a very high intensity in terms of feelings and, and discomfort and distress sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then after doing, you know, the technique a few times, you might see an intensity that is divided by two, by three, or gone to zero, which yeah. uh, is is quite uh, is quite spectacular, I would say. Yeah. So memories that had emotion are now just memories. They're just stories. Yes. They're no longer yeah. emotional stories, and that's the difference. Is your brain is no longer going to be triggered by the you know the the things that were triggering you before. Yeah, and so we had, I mentioned you that uh, offline, so we had an interview with a good friend of mine, Mike Siegel. Mike is a very, very senior gentleman and he's, he's going for a new venture. And uh, he was explaining at some point uh, going to this retreat with a lot of very successful people. And he was saying, oh, la, la, I had this imposter syndrome, you know, like he felt that they were all so much more successful than he was. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your take on this imposter syndrome, the, the limiting belief behind? Is it the comparison with others? What, what, what do you see? Uh, I'm sure you have people coming to you uh, having this imposter syndrome. Yeah, well, I think, I think everyone has it to some degree. Yeah. There's, there's always some level of am I really good enough to do this? You know, as we move on in our careers, there's always going to be, when we move on to the next level, there's always going to be that uh, apprehension or do I know enough? And yeah. and so even those things, um, it, it can be coming from uh, long-standing trauma, you know, memories. And like we said before, it can be coming from that, that childhood, you know, somebody said to you, who, who do you think you are yeah. to do this? Or, you know, you were just being a kid, having fun and, you know, and then all of a sudden somebody kind of knocked you down. And, and so it could be something as simple as that, that is, that is holding you back, making you a little apprehensive to, to go forward. And of course, there are times where I've worked with people where it's huge, the imposter syndrome, just thinking uh, it, it's, a, I'm fooling everybody. I'm, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't be here. And, and they're not acknowledging the skills that they have. They're not acknowledging the knowledge that they have. And nobody in any career knows everything. Yeah. But sometimes that can be what, what we learned as a child is I have to know everything. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. A parent could get upset with us about um, you know, why did you do that? You should know better. Yeah. And suddenly it's oh, okay. Okay. I should know. I should, I should, I should have known that. So yeah. it becomes the narrative for our lives. And even if it happened when we were six years old. Well, and that's the thing that's interesting is that you see adults, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, so on, who are still having this knee jerk reaction that is actually their five year old talking. Right. And they're like, Oh, that's incongruent. Who can this yeah. person be so successful, so put together? And then there is that event that's coming, whether it's public speaking, something else, where they felt threatened, I guess. And you have mm-hmm. this irrational behavior because it was the five year old who, who actually answered that question. Right. And they have no idea that it's coming from when they were five. Yeah. Some exactly. people, most people think, oh, that's just me. And that's one thing I want people to know is a lot of the things that you believe are just you, it's not, it's just a program. It's just yeah. a subconscious belief, a limiting belief that was, uh, that was put in there a long time ago. Either, either it was a decision you made or it was a decision your parents made and you, you watched them. And yeah. so you took those decisions on as well. And you know, I think the being aware of our limiting belief is not always easy. I right. think a good way that I want to share with, with the viewers is that, okay, if your life doesn't look like the way you want it to look, 
if your career doesn't look like the way you want it to look. And I'm not saying, okay, you just graduated and you think you should be CEO of BMO. I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to, you know, something that would make sense. Mm -hmm. um, or your money, same thing. Well, that's when you know there is a limiting belief. And if you don't know what that limiting belief is, no issue. You go to work with Kelly or someone who's doing tapping, for example, like Kelly, and, and you're going to be able to dig and understand what the problem is. And I, I think that's probably the easiest way for people to really discover where there might be limiting belief. Yeah, absolutely. It's very hard to discover limiting beliefs on your own. Yeah. Um, I when uh, although although tapping you can do it on your own. What I typically say to my clients is that uh, when you're doing it on your own, it's more going to typically um, it's going to be more for management of those feelings. It's yes. going to be more for calming uh, calming yourself when you're stressed. It's a great technique. You know, if you're going into a meeting and uh, you know maybe you have some high anxiety about something, it's a great technique to calm yourself down. Uh, but to do that real permanent work, to get rid of the problem completely, to feel better, uh, typically working with another person, uh, with a practitioner, is, is going to be the way to go. Yeah, and I, you know, and that's that's exactly why I, I work. I use tapping when I'm upset. You know, there is something. Someone told me something. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't feel good, and I'm like, okay, I don't feel good. There is something there. You know, if I feel so angry that means i'm threatened what did that person do right threaten me even if it's not a threat in his or her mind but i did feel threatened because to your point for example i didn't have the answer and that's going to put me in idea of being very anxious so that i can tap on my own but at the same time working with you helped me to approach the problem because you want to also remove the root cause of yeah. why you react a certain way you know absolutely do you have any parting words something maybe i haven't mentioned that you want to mention for the viewers again I am, i'm very happy we have a chance to do that video i really really wish people look at that because that will really change their life it did a, a lot of good for me so i really want to share share the love anything kelly i, I didn't yeah I didn't uh, you know I, especially with career i would love to to um just point out that you know if you're going for a promotion um, if you know, even in sales, you know, sometimes there's that apprehension about, you know, some people have to do cold calling, things like that. Um, this can help with that or, um, dealing with difficult people at work. Sometimes people think I have to leave this job, you know, maybe at some point they like their job and then now they have a boss that is just difficult and they can't get along with. It's amazing what can happen when you remove the triggers. Yes. So it could, it could be the fact that the, this boss is emotionally triggering you, not that, that, that maybe whatever the boss is doing is right or wrong, but it, the fact is that it's triggering you. And when we can remove that, often people, they go to work and like, oh, he doesn't bother me anymore. She doesn't bother me anymore. You yeah. know, it just becomes, they become calm and peaceful. So yeah. um, they can, you know, do their job and, and in, still enjoy uh, enjoy what they're doing, regardless of who's around them and the, and the conflicts that come along with it. I have to admit, I wish I had known that four or five years ago. I would have done a very good use of that in my career. <laughs> but uh, thank you so, so much, Kelly. So I will put, obviously, the, the, the link to your website. But uh, for people who are listening, it's uh, Kelly Elliott from Free Your Life. And you work remote yeah. or wherever you are is fine. And yeah. uh, I highly, highly recommend everyone to uh, give it a try. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. 2020. Absolutely. It's uh, life changing. Exactly. You want this, uh, re you know, like when people make all these um, goals for the new year and, you know, like all these resolutions. Well, let's make sure you're well set up to be successful yeah. with your resolutions, you know. So thank you so, so much, Kelly. It was wonderful. I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Goodbye.